After a complicated redesign process, Sonic the Hedgehog is finally in theaters and packed with fun references to the popular video games. From the iconic music to Sonic's signature rings, the film has no shortage of Easter eggs. But the best is a surprise appearance by one of the series' most beloved characters. So don't worry if it's been a while since you've played a Sonic game, we at The Binger are here to break down all those fun video game references that you might have missed. I'm Sonic, a little ball of super energy in an extremely handsome package. Sonic has more in common with his video game counterpart than just uttering his famous line, gotta go fast. Near the beginning of the film, we get a look at Sonic's map, showing all the places he can travel. The map is filled with fun references to different worlds and levels in the game, like the Mushroom Planet, which refers to the Mushroom Hill Zone from Sonic and Knuckles. But a cool little touch is that the Sega Saturn logo marks his home planet. Sonic's home planet is actually different throughout the game installments. It's been referred to as an anthropomorphic Earth, where creatures like Sonic are normal. But it's also been a completely different planet called Mobius. In the movie, it's called Planet Freedom. But the choice to use the Sega Saturn logo nicely ties together the different game locations. And that's not the only logo reference in the game. The design on Sonic's martial arts headband is actually the title screen logo from the very first Sonic game. Plus, during the opening of the movie, there's a road sign reading Mega DR. This is a reference to Sega's Mega Drive console, also known as the Sega Genesis. But Sonic's connection to his origins goes way beyond logos. He lives in a place called Green Hills, a reference to the Green Hill Zone from the very first Sonic game. So it's nice to see that Sonic is sticking to his roots, even though he's got an animation upgrade. In the film, Sonic's rings allow him to travel to different worlds. He was given the rings by his guardian, Long Claw the Owl, after they were attacked by Echidnas and Sonic was forced to flee. The rings had different purposes throughout the Sonic games, but the main one is usually to get points and to stay alive. When Sonic is hit by an enemy or falls, he loses all his rings and has to collect them in order to recover. And sometimes collecting enough rings means that a giant ring would appear, allowing the player to enter a bonus level. Level. In some Sonic adaptations, the rings even allow him to run faster. Of course, the film wouldn't be complete without Sonic using his rings. In one instance, he falls off a building and loses them, forcing him to scramble to collect the rings just like he does in the video games. And since the rings allow him to travel, he uses them to avoid being captured by Robotnik. Without his rings, Sonic is a lot weaker. In the film, he's tranquilized by Tom and drops his rings in a portal to San Francisco, which is what forces him and Tom to take off on an adventure to get them back. Once he gets his rings back, he uses them to teleport Tom and Maddie back to Green Hills before taking on Robotnik in the final battle. The movie features an awesome action sequence where Sonic has to outrun a barrage of missiles. While this would be a challenge for some, it's a piece of cake for Sonic. He even has some fun with it. While running, he grabs a pair of missiles and uses them as drumsticks to play a catchy tune. But it's not a random beat. It's actually the level complete music that's featured in the games whenever Sonic would clear a stage. The little reference suggests that Sonic's patting himself on the back for a job well done while giving us a little nostalgic throwback to a tune that played repeatedly throughout our childhood. Some fans were a little disappointed when none of Sonic's fast friends appeared in the trailers. The only real cameo by Sonic's pals comes in the form of a quick appearance by the Chow, the virtual pets introduced in Sonic Adventure, which can be spotted on the dashboard of the family van. But the film didn't leave us completely hanging when it comes to seeing one of the most classic Sonic characters. While some credit scenes aren't worth sticking around for, Sonic's mid credit scene is a major moment for the movie. In a surprising sequence, the film sets up a plan for a sequel, and it'll feature the fan-favorite character, Tails. Miles Tails Prower is a flying fox with two twin tails. During the credits, it's revealed that he's tracking down Sonic to get his help with something that seems extremely time-sensitive. After spotting his location, the fox uses his tails to fly off, presumably to combine forces with his blue friend. The tracking device is likely going to be used to hunt Chaos Emerald, which 
allows Sonic to go supersonic and transform from blue to gold. Earlier in the film, there's actually a Chaos Emerald drawn on Sonic's map. Then later, Sonic alludes to going supersonic during his final showdown with Dr. Robotnik. But he doesn't actually have any Chaos Emeralds, so he never makes the transformation. Since Chaos Emeralds didn't make an appearance in the video games until Sonic 2, it seems plausible that they're taking a cue from the video games and being saved for the second film. As for other teasers about a sequel, Dr. Robotnik says at the end of the film that he'll be, quote, home by Christmas. So it's entirely possible that he'll be appearing in the next Sonic film. And maybe it'll have a holiday release date. What other Sonic characters are you hoping to appear in the sequel? Let us know in the comments. We've briefly mentioned the Mushroom Hill planet that appeared on Sonic's map, but later in the film we get to actually see the planet when Sonic defeats Dr. Robotnik and sends him through a ring into a giant strange world full of giant mushrooms. In the video games, the Mushroom Hill Zone was packed full of various mushrooms that could be used as springs and platforms, making it a pretty action-packed level. But it seems like Sonic isn't so fond of this particular stage. He makes a few verbal references to hating mushrooms, which could refer to how the Mushroom Hill Zone was kind of an annoying level because the Badniks were constantly throwing mushrooms at Sonic to mess him up. It could also be a subtle dig at Mario, another video game character who just loves mushrooms. This rivalry is also referenced when Sonic is running through San Francisco and strikes a pose that's just like his Super Smash Bros pose. We definitely wouldn't be opposed to a Sonic vs Mario movie in the future. Another allusion to the Mushroom Hill Zone comes from Dr. Robotnik in his lab. While he's busy flipping breakers, we can see a label by some switches that says Badnik. The Badniks are Dr. Robotnik's little robots that love to thwart Sonic's plans. Another label appears in Robotnik's lab that simply says, quote, Evil Lab. So while he might be an eccentric villain, we've got to give Robotnik some props for organization. Sonic has earned the nickname Blue Devil in the movie. While he's not really called Blue Devil in the games, the nickname does appear in the franchise. It's a reference to the car driven by his robotic nemesis, Metal Sonic, in the kart racing game Sonic Drift. This makes us wonder whether some high-speed racing could make its way into future Sonic films. But the Blue Devil isn't the only one of Sonic's nicknames that's referenced. A few years ago, a kooky drawing of Sonic titled Sonic the Hedgehog went viral online. The meme is actually featured in the movie when Crazy Carl shows Sonic the drawing of his internet alter ego. The terrible Sonic drawing could also be a subtle dig at the movie's earlier Sonic design, which had to get completely redone by the VFX department after the fans were not pleased with the changes made to the iconic character. Video games are known for their music. There are whole orchestras that travel the world bringing video game tunes to life for captivated audiences. So of course Sonic the Hedgehog features some of the classic video game themes. The opening song, fittingly titled Friends, was composed by a band called Hyper Potions and was featured in 2017's Sonic Mania and a piano version of the popular Green Hill Zone theme is featured near the end of the film just before Tom and Maddie give Sonic his own room. Composer Tom Holkenborg told Polygon that he has an obsession with updating vintage sound and he used the same sound chip that was in the original Sega to help create the score for the Sonic film. And that classic Dr. Robotnik theme? That was actually inspired by the Darth Vader theme because he wanted it to be menacing, but also a bit lighthearted and funny to reflect the many facets of Jim Carrey character. Even video game characters have their vices, right? For Sonic, it's always been Chili Dogs. It's a long-running obsession of his in the game, so of course the film couldn't leave out his particular dietary habits. The movie references the Chili Dogs when Sonic scarfs some down during the big bar fight scene, which really gives us a sense of his priority. For most people, it would be hard to keep their figure with all that junk food, but the fast little hedgehog probably burns it all off in 10 minutes. And Sonic isn't the only Sonic character who's a fan of the fatty treat. During the end credits of Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood, Sonic and Tails reward themselves for a job well done by going out for some chili dogs. So can we expect the pair to reward themselves with chili dogs if the movie gets a sequel? We're gonna go ahead and say yes. 
Jim Carrey brings his iconic over-the-top flavor to the role of Dr. Robotnik, which kind of reminds us of an evil Ace Ventura. We're talking wardrobe changes, dance sequences, and a generally cartoonish personality. Robotnik's entire character is an accumulation of references to different Sonic bosses. First, there's his name. In the Japanese games, he's known as Egghead, but his name was changed to Dr. Robotnik for the American release. The film references by nicknaming him Egghead, and they even have Jim Carrey speak a little Japanese to reference his origins. Plus, during the final battle, Robotnik makes the same moves as the Sonic 2 boss that appears at the end of the Death Egg Zone. In order to defeat Robotnik, Sonic has to repeatedly hit his machine like he does in the video games. This is a popular mechanic for most video games, so the studio probably felt like they had to include the repetitive attacks so that it would feel realistic for video game fans. A reference to Robotnik's original character design comes from his red suit and goggles, but also from his signature mustache, which changes in his final scene to more closely resemble his mustache from the games and comics. And of course, Sonic's whole journey to facing Dr. Robotnik plays out exactly like it would in a video game, with Sonic running from him from level to level and then facing him as the final boss. The most obvious of the video game throwbacks is the 2D 16-bit credit sequence. It features Dr. Robotnik and Genesis Sonic reenacting the movie in 16-bit graphics and traveling across special stages from Sonic 2 and 3. We get to see iconic Sonic levels and Jim Carrey's comedic personality reflected in an animated Dr. Robotnik. It's a fun little recap that stays true to the graphics and feel of the original game. Plus, it precedes Tails' surprising appearance, so all in all, it's an epic couple of minutes for fans of the video games. So, what did you think of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie? What other awesome Easter eggs did you spot? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content from The Binger.